Hello everybody, my name is Aaron, and I just met Greg here, and Greg has an airbrushing shop in the mall, something I've been very impressed with, and I met a friend of his and told me about him, and so I had to come down and meet him. So this is Greg, and one of the things we want to talk about, Greg, is basically, um, what did you do before, I mean, airbrushing? What, what kind of brought you into it? What were you doing? Well, I was that guy who always drew. Whether you were out playing kickball or baseball, wherever you were at in the States, I guess, um, I was that guy that was off to the side drawing pictures. Uh -huh. I was that guy who uh, always painted in your art classes. And, uh, Did you write on the walls and stuff? Uh, I didn't do too much of that. Uh, it gets you in trouble. But uh, any chance I got an opportunity to paint on something plain and blank, uh, uh -huh. I definitely took that uh -huh. opportunity. Now, now, you said before you did art, you were uh, a policeman. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. How did that go? I, uh, I'm prior military. My wife's military. So wherever she goes, I had to go. Okay. She's uh, now retired. Uh -huh. But uh, in Pensacola, Scambia County, I uh, always had an urge uh, to uh, be a police officer. So uh, I took that challenge and uh, became a uh, sheriff's deputy for Scam County. Uh, I wanted to be a police officer and just never did it. Uh, my mother talked me out of it. <laughs> it's a tough job. It's a tough <laughs> yeah, job. Okay. Now, um, what inspired you to actually start going into airbrushing? Well, I was about eight or nine years old in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. And, uh, I was walking throughout the mall, one of the malls that's on the standing now, it's called uh, Bachelor Manor Mall, uh -huh. and uh, I saw a guy airbrushing, and he was airbrushing a car tag. Okay. And uh, at that point in time, I was so amazed with what he was doing with a piece of metal, that's the only way I could really describe it, uh -huh. and uh, something that I'd never seen before, because remember, I mean, all I did was draw home tools, and uh, Coke, crayons, something, whatever I can get my hands on at the time. Didn't have a lot of money. Okay. So uh, when I saw the airbrush, I said, you know what, one day I'm going to try that. Uh -huh. And uh, I joined the Navy in 89, right after high school. And uh, I went down to the beach in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Okay. And uh, I saw these guys down at my Wowie airbrush. Uh -huh. And uh, at that point in time, I said, you know what? I'm going to put everything into it and uh, jump in with both feet. Okay. And uh, before you know it, I opened up a uh, flea market stand in Bill's Flea Market off of Virginia Beach Boulevard. Okay. Um, now, you actually had started out with a, a, a kiosk or something? Mm -hmm. How did that work out? Well, uh, during my uh, uh, commute throughout the States, uh, with my wife being in the military, myself being in the military, uh, I got the... Uh, the strength and the uh, wherewithal to jump in and open up a kiosk in the nearest mall, the Cordova Mall in Jacksonville. And uh, I uh, was a little nervous. You know, it was my big, one of the biggest uh, business ventures that I went in, and it was by myself. You know, it was something that uh, if I fell, the only person I had to, to look at was myself. <laughs> yourself, you know what I mean? Good thing. So uh, I. Uh, uh, opened up my first kiosk, and uh, the mall loved me. Let alone the customers that okay. came in, okay. the mall in and of itself really loved me. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point in time, I got up the uh, 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 the strength and the confidence to say, you know what, I can do a kiosk easy. Mm -hmm. Can I move up to a big store? That's the big thing right there. Yep. And that's one of the things that I was so impressed with Greg, is that he moved, he actually took that step and he moved from uh, kiosk and up to a store because you just don't see that. You don't see this kind of place in the, in the mall. You no, see the, no. the, 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 what is it, blue screen or the, the screen? You yeah, see that, but you don't actually see an airbrush place. And that was one of the things that really impressed me about you. Now, was it kind of hard to build up into that? It was because it's about strategically looking for a location that's going to land for you. Mm -hmm. That's going to uh, be the best place for people to come and see. The majority of the people come and see. So every airbrush artist, they really want to be around the food court. Right. Uh -huh. But will a mall agree <laughs> to have you in the food court? That's that's the important know? part right there. Having that mall yeah, let absolutely. you get close to the food court. So I was able to speak with the mall manager who allowed me to come into a food court. But remember, the food court in the mall is one of the most expensive locations. Right. So now you have the balance between hey, you know, it's a good location. Man, do you have those thousands of dollars that it's going to take right. to get that position? Mm -hmm. So uh, 
I, uh, able, I was able to collect enough cans and save up some pennies and uh, got my first location in uh, the Cordova Mall mm -hmm. in Jacksonville, Flo uh, excuse me, in Pensacola, Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first food court location was here. Okay, good. Now, you know what, something, and this is just off the wall, but do you have the first dollar that you actually made? No, I get it. Back I, in the I, old I, days, I, man, guys would always take the first dollar that right. they made and they would right, always right, hang it right, up right, on the right, wall. Right, and I was right. about, it didn't get stolen because in hard times, the dollar is. But I, I, just, I just wanted to throw that out no, there. No, it's been, it's been spent. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about um, what inspires you. I mean, what makes you actually want to do a picture? Well, um, when I first started at Russian, it was just art in general. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what it was. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to paint, I just wanted to draw. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is only part of it. Mm -hmm. When you're running a business, you actually have to have people who want to to build something. Right. You know, you gotta have a build a team. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta think the business side of it. What is the cost at? Uh -huh. You know, and uh, you can't just put your blinders on and just paint. You can't mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I uh, went back to school, uh, got my bachelor's degree in criminal justice, and began to speak to people about what it is they want to have done. Mm -hmm. So I could actually envision what it is a person wants to have done before mm -hmm. I actually paint it. Mm -hmm. so and that's something I noticed about you when I was talking about my idea of what I want to do for my car show. And you, you told me, since I've already got the idea that I want. I thought, OK, that's cool right there. Okay. Okay. Um, one question I want to ask you is, okay, you've done something that I thought was pretty cool. You okay. really have. And, but I want to know, where do you want to go from here? Okay. Well, um, I talk to my guys all the time about, hey, how do we make bring airbrushing back mm -hmm. to where people want to embrace it and want to buy it and have it, wear it, you know, and have it be a part of their everyday life. Uh, the one thing that I always wanted was to make sure that I get all the artists in that area together, mm -hmm. especially the airbrush artists. Mm -hmm. and we get all the airbrush artists together and collaborate on building a location. Mm -hmm. If you build it, they'll come. Yeah, I believe And that. right now what you have is you have airbrush artists who are all individuals. Mm -hmm. And that really doesn't work. Because what you have is you have people that will maybe be good in one thing, but not good in another. Oh, I see. Close minded as okay. it pertains to bettering their talent. Mm -hmm. And now I have four or five artists and countless other artists that I've actually influenced mm -hmm. to when they book their own location, I want everybody to have their own too. Okay. But work with other artists around you. Don't be afraid to show them, hey, this is how you accomplish a certain technique. Mm -hmm. And it'll come back to you. Okay. I, I believe that also. I think that you should grow. And when you grow, the people under you should be lifted up too. Because there's always room for everybody. Absolutely. You know, there's always Absolutely. room for everybody. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to ask you this question. And um, <laughs> guys, we were in the mall. There's a lot of noise. I'm sorry. But one question I want to ask you, because this website is called the Unwritten Rules, uh -huh. what would be the unwritten rule that you would say to everybody out there, to all the guys that are in there in Russia? Okay. I definitely have one unwritten rule, and that is, and I learned this through trial and error. Mm -hmm. If you want to go into business for yourself as an airbrush artist, mm -hmm. go into business with another airbrush artist. Don't go into business with someone who is pretty much just your backer, because they don't know how hard it is to accomplish a certain project. Right. So all the time that you're putting into it, and you're using brain power, you know, so you can get drained too, just like a person picking up cinder blocks throughout their work day. Mm -hmm. So if a person is not out there doing the heavy lifting with you, which is airbrushing, mm -hmm. don't go into business with them. Go into business with someone who understands how hard it is to accomplish mm -hmm. But somebody that's a little bit more seasoned in the field. Well, seasoned in the field can be just like you. You guys can learn together. Mm -hmm. but the main point that I want you to take away from it is this person needs to learn, I mean, needs to know how to airbrush. Mm -hmm. Needs to be airbrushing with you. Because if they're not airbrushing with you, they're just standing off to the side saying, hurry up, man, hurry up, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't uh, understand that you uh, can't hurry up. Oh, okay. You know, All right. it's not one of those things. Now, I want to go into business, and I hope that you guys go into business with someone who does the heavy lifting with you. And before we go, it's, we're about out of time now, so we're going to get ready to shut down. But I want to talk about the employees that work for you. So sure. a lot of them basically take their employees. 
Uh, it's a combination of are they a good fit? Mm -hmm. Have they airbrushed before? Mm -hmm. If not, how do we go about developing them? Okay. Uh, and also, I want to make sure that I have a diverse group. Okay. You know, so it's one of those things where it's it's trial and error, give everybody an opportunity. Okay. But uh, you'll know in about the uh, first week or so if they're a good fit or if this is what they really want to do. Okay. All right, guys, we're, we're going to take a break right now, and uh, then I want to see if I can get a couple of the other guys that are doing their airbrushing and helping with them, okay? Just hold on, we'll be right back.